for more than a decade, the Goa government has resisted suggestions and attempts to notify the Madehi uh, Reserve as a tiger sanctuary. Why have they done so? The point is that for any state, logically speaking, having a tiger reserve is a matter of pride. But they have refused to notify the Madehi Wildlife Sanctuary as a tiger reserve. Fact is that tigers have been spotted in the sanctuary and other areas are joining the area every now and then. And the most plausible explanation environmentalists say is that this area shares a border with Karnataka, which is an area where there are uh, enough tigers and this is an area that is known as a tiger landscape as well. So that is what the environmentalists are saying. In 2011, both the central government and the National Tiger Conservation Authority made multiple requests to the Goa government to declare the area as a tiger reserve. But the suggestions, ladies and gentlemen, fell on deaf ears. Cut to 2020. This is when a tigress and three cubs died due to poisoning in the sanctuary as the demands for a tiger reserve grow stronger. After nearly three years, today there's been a big win for the big cat in Goa. The Goa bench of the Bombay High Court has passed a historic judgment to notify the wildlife sanctuary and its surrounding areas as a tiger reserve. And they have given the Goa government exactly three months to do it. The Bombay High Court's order starts with a profound quote from the Mahabharata. I'll read that quote out to you. It says, if there is no forest, the tiger gets killed. If there is no tiger, then the forest gets destroyed. Hence, the tiger protects the forest and the forest guards the tiger. The 90-page order was a big setback to the Goa government, which has uh, been ordered to prepare a tiger conservation plan and share it with the National Tiger Conservation Authority in the next three months. The High Court has made it clear. It said, and I'm quoting the High Court now, we cannot allow the tiger, which is a national animal, to fall into a death trap. The Goa government wasn't very happy. Listen in to what Goa's forest minister, Vishwajit Rane, had to say. Yes, we are concerned as a state, after discussing with the chief minister and also with the uh, other officials, we feel that we should explore other options and we will be going uh, with, uh, to the Supreme Court to get relief for the state because we feel that uh, the relief is a must because whatever as per the wildlife centuries, whatever needed to be done then in the last so many years in uh, the respective uh, parts of uh, in the various areas of Made has still not been done. So that was Goa's forest minister saying that the government intends to approach the Supreme Court. But the fact is that Goa's forest minister, the man you just heard, Vishwajit Rane, for the longest time has opposed converting the sanctuary into a tiger reserve. He says the tigers are not natives to Goa and so there is no reason why the sanctuary should be turned into a tiger reserve. I also want to take a second to remind our viewers that it was the very same Vishwajit Rane who about a year ago said and I quote, as long as I am the forest minister, there is no question of a tiger reserve in Madei. Mr. Rane, however, seems to be hiding behind the fact that there are forest dwellers in the area. He is using forest dwellers as a shield. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the forest minister of Goa. The region we are talking about is a region that falls in the Western Ghats. It is home to tigers. Tigers are an endangered species. They are extremely important to protect the Western Ghats as an ecosystem. But it is these Western Ghats that have reportedly rep reported a decline in its tiger population. Factors like agriculture and infrastructural development are threatening the existence of a habitat that houses the largest tiger population in the world. Which is why upgrading the legal status of the sanctuary to that of a tiger reserve is important to ensure that there is a strong protection regime for the big cats. Going back to what the High Court said. They said there has to be a strong reason as to why the government is opposing the move. Now, the big question is, why is it that the Goa government doesn't want a tiger reserve in the Madei Wildlife Sanctuary? The sanctuary 
lies in the Western Ghats, as I told you. It's extremely rich in iron ore reserves. But it is also an ecologically sensitive area. Several iron ore mines were operational in the area until 2018 when the Supreme Court stepped in and cancelled the iron ore mining lease. A Supreme Court headed bench, a bench that was headed by Justin Badan Lakur, said that the mining companies were exploiting natural resources for what they called profit maximization. The Goa government is still fighting a legal case against the ban. I'm going to repeat that for you. There is iron ore mining that was going on in Goa. The Supreme Court banned it. The Goa government is still fighting a legal case against this ban, saying that mining is a source of livelihood for thousands of people in the vicinity. Naturally, if the area is declared a tiger reserve, it will mean a full stop to the possibility of mining in the region forever, which is why perhaps the Goa government and the likes of Vishwajit Rane are opposing the decision. Essentially, the government feels if there's no mining, there will be no money. And we want the money, we don't want the tigers. Norma Alvarez is from the Goa Foundation. She is the lawyer who took the Goa government to court. Dr. R.G. Soni is uh, a retired APCCF and ex-field director at the Pench Tiger Reserve. And we have Anurag Naidu, who's an author, uh, who's joining us on the broadcast. Everyone, thank you very much. Uh, Norma, can I just start with you? Can I ask you, you've been, you've been the one fighting the case, right? You've been the one in court. Can you help us understand what exactly is the Goa government's official problem with the Tiger Reserve? Yes. Any state, as I said, would be very happy to have a Tiger Reserve. It, is, it is a mark of honor. It's a privilege. Well, well, the state in its official response never I, said that they didn't want a Tiger Reserve. They yeah. never made a statement that they don't want a Tiger Reserve in Goa. Three affidavits were filed by the um, uh, chief conservator of forests, who's also the chief wildlife warden. And in these three affidavits, they, they gave uh, their objections were, number one, that they had not yet finally notified the sanctuaries in terms of Section 26A. They had not declared them finally. Why? Because they had not completed the settlement of forest rights of the people who lived in the forest. That was one of their big mm. reasons. Secondly, they said mm. that the, 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 the letter from the, NT, the National Tiger Conservation Authority was not mandatory, it was directory. It was merely a suggestion and they could refuse the suggestion. But they had not done anything. They had not refused it. They had not said uh, raised any objections, nothing. So they said it is not mandatory. Then they said that we need time to study the impact of a tiger reserve on the uh, um, population in the area. What will be the impact on the fringe population? That was their third objection. And finally, they surprisingly said that why special protection to the tiger? We are protecting all animals. Everybody requires, all wildlife requires equal protection. We see no reason for giving special protection to the tiger. These were their official four basic reasons for opposing um, uh, the, the a response and sending the, uh, notifying the uh, tiger reserve for Goa. This is what their official stand was. But after the petition was heard and concluded, then a state board meeting was called by the forest minister and a decision was taken to refuse to notify the wildlife sanctuary. But in the court proceedings, they never said this and whatever decision was taken by the state wildlife board is, uh, is, is, is not part of the um, chapter four of the Wildlife Protection Act, which deals with the setting up of the sanctuaries. So when the court asked repeatedly, but are you saying that you will set up the sanctuary? Have you opposed the sanctuary? The Advocate General for the state repeatedly said, we have never opposed it, we want time. When they were asked how much time, they couldn't give an answer. Okay, 
So, uh, uh, it's pretty amazing what has happened in court and what has happened outside court. And Norma, the oddest thing that has come out of the mouth of the Goa government is why should we protect the tiger? Why does the tiger need special protection? We are protecting every animal in the forest. Dr. Sony, I wonder whether you're with us. Can okay, you hear I guess me? Uh, Anurag, can you hear me? All right. Okay, yes, Mr. Sony. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Your frame is not very... Uh, you know what we'll do, Mr. Sony? We'll give you another five minutes to fix your frame and uh, we'll come back to you. Anurag Naidu, till then, please help me understand. It is 50 years to Project Tiger. India has worked very, very, very hard to stabilize the population of tigers in India. Right now, there are 3,167 tigers after a 50-year effort. Does anything explain the Goa government's stance? If you're telling us that we need to be, you know, we need to be mindful of the humans who live in the forest and there are forest dwellers who need to be settled, yes, they need to be settled. But you can't use forest dwellers as a guise to put a stop to the notification of Madehi as a tiger sanctuary as the government of Goa is doing. Yes, Shreya, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the, Shreya, uh, on the show, Shreya. And I, I'll put a very, very, very practical perspective. You know, Shreya, I grew up in a place called Gondia in Maharashtra. I think one of your panelists was a forest conservation for Pinch. It is in near Nagpur. And, and in near Gondia, there is a tiger reserve called Nagzira Tiger Reserve. Where back in the days when I was a kid, there used to be about 24, 25, 30, 40 tigers. But today, there are about hardly seven, eight tigers. We rarely see them. But there is no official statistics, even with the Maharashtra government. Now, what happened to that is because, although it was notified to be a tiger uh, reserve, there were people who are, even now, when we go to the safaris, you see people, if the villagers and the tribals who are staying in that area, they take cycles, they take the two-wheelers, they walk on the streets with, uh, you know, a protective, uh, uh, you, you, the, you know, the devices with them. And then they also attack the tiger when the tiger attacks them. So there are several instances where the villagers have killed the tigers. And there have been several orders by the former masters. If we are really an advocate for the tigers or the life of tigers, which we all, I believe, are, Nobody is denying that, including Mr. Vichwajit Rane. But the fact we have to understand is, are tigers also safe? You declare a tiger reserve just for the state of vindicating the stand taken by the advocate who represented in the panel, just because a group of people went to the high court and was fighting for, the, for this cause, just because they want to win on paper, does not mean that they have secured the life of the tiger. If we really have to secure the life of the tiger, then we need to practically mm. think, is it really possible, practically possible? That is what Mr. Vitrujit Rane was speaking about. He is known to be people's person there. If you ask anyone, Mr. Rane is concerned about, is it really practical for, for us to protect this tiger just by declaring it a tiger reserve on paper? The people or the villagers, they, there is a precedent. I can give you about five, six tiger reserves that I know very well I can speak about. The people who dwell in that area, they do not move. And you cannot beat them to death well, if they don't move. So there is a practical situation. There are about five okay. or seven tigers. I don't so know the exact essentially, count, But don't, don't break. Okay, don't okay, Mr. Naidu, way. essentially, the case you're point, making is... Don't brand the case you're making the tigers, is... The tigers in India no, no, just a minute. Let me, let me understand this. Let me just, let, just let me simplify what you are saying. Essentially, you are pitching this as man versus wild. Dr. Sony, is this debate really about tigers versus humans? Because to my mind, it is not. It is not like uh, forest reserves have, have not been declared as tiger sanctuaries uh, across this country. They have been converted. And yes, there has again been an issue of settling forest dwellers, but they have been settled. And they can be rehabilitate, rehabilitated and settled in Goa as well. So is this really about man versus wild, man versus tigers, and that you need to pick, you know, you need to choose and you need to pick, and the Goa government is picking the humans and not the tigers? No. Uh, if you see, tiger is an apex uh, animal, and if we want to protect the forest, tiger is very much needed. But uh, looking about the situation in Goa, which is a very small state, I don't know. 
and tiger can be protected with the status of sanctuary. It's not that tiger can only be protected with the uh, making it as a tiger reserve. There are many tiger reserves which has been which has been declared a zero tiger in spite of all efforts. The point is your effort is needed to protect the tiger and forest area. That is more important. You see, in my Bhopal area, mm -hmm. around Bhopal, there is a Rathapani sanctuary having 20 plus tiger. And uh, NTCA uh, has directed as a few years back to make its tiger reserve. But our state declined. Because if you put mm -hmm. a tiger reserve, there are so many this thing that then you need a buffer area, then you need Jiko to zone. So it is very close to Bhopal and it will definitely create a problem. So Goa government should do a study and if it can be declared a tiger reserve, that is the best option. But if you cannot do because of uh, say money problem, buffer rehabilitation for many things, then at least you protect the tiger. There are so many efforts that can be done. Okay. Ratha Pani is simply flourishing tiger. Okay. So, Norma? Uh, uh, I have one more thing, uh, I Norma? think. Norma, respond NTCA to that. Okay, Mr. Sony, I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. I, I heard you. Le I heard you. Let me, just, uh, let, let me just put that question to Norma. Norma, uh, then, you know, what Mr. Sony is saying is that Goa is not the only state or the only novel state to decline a tiger reserve in its territory. Other states like Madhya Pradesh have done it as well. Uh, because, you know, there are 20 things that you res uh, that you require when a tiger reserve is being established or notified. And maybe it's not practical for state governments to do it. For example, in the case of Bhopal, they're saying it was too close to Bhopal. It wasn't possible for us to give a buffer zone, etc. And if you need to protect the tiger, you can protect the tiger without declaring it a tiger reserve. So why the insistence, Nora, on a tiger reserve? Well, see, the, the, the law is that when the NTCA issues a recommendation to set up a tiger reserve, the state government is bound to notify a wildlife sanctuary. The NTCA in their reply said that it was not just a recommendation, it was also a direction. They sent it three times. Secondly, mm -hmm. they issued when four big cats were killed in the Made Wildlife Sanctuary in 2020, the National Tiger Conservation Authority sent a team and they have written such a disparaging report about the way Goa government is looking after the tigers. And this is all quoted in the judgment. There is no proper mechanism for, uh, for looking after the, the, uh, the animals. There are no anti-poaching camps. All is not well with the sanctuary. The wireless communication does not function. There exists no management plan for the wildlife sanctuaries and several others. So there was no looking after of the wildlife sanctuaries and no plan in Goa. Secondly, there is a very big misconception that a lot of people have got to be moved out of the sanctuary. That is not so at all. The law says that in the core area, people would have to be moved out but in the buffer areas, they are required to stay as per the Project Tiger, Tiger Guidelines. Now, when Made and Netravali were declared as wildlife sanctuaries, and when the Forest uh, Department actually marked the area of the Tiger Reserve, which they did in the year 2016, and presented it to the forest, to the uh, State Wildlife Board, they specifically state that all the human habitations were left out of the tiger reserve. So there is a, 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 a canard being spread around that all people will have to be moved out, but they will not have to be moved out at all. It only changes the status from wildlife sanctuary to tiger reserve. And what is the benefit of that change of status? You have access to the vast government funds given by the central government for setting up all the infrastructure required to protect the wildlife sanctuaries, from jeeps to wireless uh, sets, to uh, telecommunication, to payment of forest guards, to anti-poaching squads, to rehabilitation of the villagers, 
15 lakh per family is provided in case they have to be moved out. So there are tremendous benefits by setting up, uh, by, by renaming it. Just changing the and state, therefore, but there is no and new therefore, area which is required to yeah. be taken to make it a tiger reserve. It's the very same okay. wildlife sanctuary. So, Norma, therefore the question. If I may add one Therefore the question. Therefore uh, the question. Why? Just a minute. I, I'm, I'm out of time. I have to go to Manipur. Okay. Therefore the question. Based on what you're saying, Norma, therefore the question. What exact problem does the Goa government have with the wildlife reserve being notified as a tiger sanctuary if you will have access to central funds that will only make the area better. What problem do you have? It has to be then more than what you are telling us. We we'll leave but it there for the moment. The case is certainly not over. We'll go to the Supreme Court. I'm not out of time because I have to go to, uh, go to Manipur now. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. I'm going to thank our other guests as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Soni and Anurag Naidu for joining us.